Greetings once again. Here we are. We're, we're uh, you know, this is a fascinating day today. Uh, the uh, Mexico and United States are on their final of their last game uh, to see who wins third place. And then, of course, you got your fourth place winner because whoever wins is third place. And then Peru and Brazil already played. And so, if there's what's interesting as I'm seeing things. In the scripture, and I'm going to read you the verse, but Josh and I were just talking about how the potter has the power over the clay. There were players on a team that were players of honor and they got to, yeah, they got the reward for all their diligence prior to this game. They became the cup winners. They, be, they were looked at or looked upon as vessels of honor in a sport called soccer. The nation, the whole world begins to view them and Brazil was honored this year and it's, an, it's every four years that they play for the cup. So four years from now we're going to see what vessels of honor will endure the test, the trials, the tribulations the confrontations, the very things that you and I need to see that this day and age we're living on, we've got to be vessels of honor. We've got to restore the honor of our Heavenly Father, the honor of the order, the honor of the Sheliac or the Apostle. <coughs> because some of us still use the apostolic term versus the Sheliac term, which is one is Hebrew, one is Catholic. So I'm asking all of you today, if you bear with me and begin to think about what have you done that has not honored your heavenly father? What have you done that has not honored your heavenly father? What have you done that has not honored your heavenly father? Do you talk about people? Do you talk about your pastor, your apostle? Do you talk about the church members? Do you talk about the ecclesia? Do you talk about the set apart ones? Do you talk about those that have a nice car and those that have no car at all? Do you talk about those that are dressed well and those that aren't? But yet the scripture says that the Father has the power over the clay. So let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight that you have the power over our lives. You are molding us. Uh, you are shaping us. You are giving us a word that sets deep into our innermost being. The very vortex of our lives are controlled by you. So we want to thank you. We ask you that you open up our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Like Isaiah prophesied, there is a generation that have eyes and yet they see not. There's a generation that have ears and yet they hear not. Let us not be that generation, Father. Help us, we cry out, mercy. Restore honor back to us. Restore the fear of Yahuwah. According to the scripture in the King James, it says that we should submit one to another in the fear of of Yahuwah or the fear of the Lord, King James translation. I'd rather use the fear of Yahuwah because that's more uh, closer to the biblical writing transcripts of old, which we come into the new covenant and we use the term favor, we use the term honor, we use the term grace. Please don't forget those things because that's where we're at right now. We need to restore the fear back into the body of Mashiach. We need to restore the honor that the Father is due His name. That's why in the scripture in Corinth it says that give honor where honor is due and give tribute where tribute is due. And Timothy talks about there's vessels of honor and dishonor. But before he gets to the vessels of honor and dishonor, he says there's vessels of gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, those vessels, as you look at them, those vessels are outward vessels. They are vessels that you could see with the naked eye. 
You could see a vessel that has gold, silver, precious stones. Why? Because they wear it. They wear it on the outside. They wear it around their neck. They, they wear it on their hands. Those, those are vessels that have gold, gold rings, gold rings with diamonds, see? So then he goes, he moves back into that order in 2 Timothy 2 and 20, and he says, but there's vessels also of honor and vessels of dishonor. Now, how would you know what a vessel of honor is or dishonor? You couldn't tell the same because if you took both people, one of honor and one of dishonor, and clothe them in gold and silver and precious stones and put all the glamoring uh, outfits on, you would not know what was on the inside. This is why we need to restore honor back. Honor is where you honor the your apostle, you honor your your sheliac, you honor your pastor, you honor the elders, you honor those that are in leadership. You don't talk about them, and if you do, you the Bible even says, don't bring a, an accusation among an elder. Don't speak about an elder. Why? Because you're supposed to go to them to share what your feelings are about them. But see, because we don't have no honor, and we don't have no order, we don't know what the Bible says concerning how we are to support I know people have me and my wife for dinner they talk about us not all the time but when they do they lash out and they speak and then they wonder why their life is all miserable why are they unhappy why are they in the middle of a disputation among their family among their wife why are they divorced why are they broken up why are they broke why are they poor all those things the scripture says now watch it says honor the poor it says honor them that are in government what does it say honor them why because even if i disagree with trump i don't talk about him i pray for him that the father gives them wisdom even with my neighbors when i know what they're doing in the sense of i smell the weed i smell the drugs they're smoking i don't talk about them i pray for them why because in return you are snared by your words, Proverbs chapter 6. Your Proverbs 6 says you are snared by your words and you are justified by your words. So in this hour, we need to see how the Father is orchestrating once again, hallelujah, His order in the kingdom. Watch this. Remember now, you're going to see something in the scripture. If you go with me to 1 Corinthians, and we're going to turn there real quick. Actually, I think it might be even in uh, 2 Corinthians, but let me see real quick. I believe it's uh, chapter 9, I think. 1 Corinthians 9. Let's see if that's where it is. No, 2 Corinthians then. Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 9. Okay, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to start in, in uh, verse 8. Or actually go up to verse 7. Oh God, let's go up to verse 6. Or maybe the whole verse. Anyway, <laughs> you know how when you start revelating and the Father begins to illuminate you and give you light, this is how you interpret the scripture. You don't read it literal. You read it by the light of spiritual understanding that's coming up on you. Since God, I'm going to use the King James because I'm teaching, since God is hidden in Christ, since Yah is hidden in Yeshua, He's the light of the world, you are His world, you are His temple, you are His city. Did you see how where I'm leading you? So if you see it from that dimension, when you see Scripture, like I'm going to read to you verse 6, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, out of darkness. Weren't you in darkness at one time? Yeah. Now the light's in you. Now the, sh the light shines out of darkness. Do you catch the, what, how I'm leading you to think with your mind? It's not that the world's in darkness. The world's going to be in darkness as long as the Father is working on His children. Light is being greater understood. Light is becoming more relevant, more honest, more pure. So here's the verse. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the 
esteem of Yah in the face of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, is Yeshua in you? Now, watch this closely. Is Yeshua in you? Yes. So, if Yeshua is in you, you honor him. Why? Because the son honored the father. And if you honor the father, then you honor him who the father sent. Do you see? Now, the son says to you in the scripture, he says, and I send you. If they honor you, they honor me, for I have sent you. Mm -hmm. Same principle that the father said to the son. He says, son, you go. You and I, I honor each other, and we flow with one another. We don't dispute. We have no grievances. We have nothing around us that will cause us anything to bring us into a lower form of darkness and a lesser form, a lower form of darkness and a lesser form of light. There's light all over the place, but if I get a flashlight and then I turn on one of these uh, photography lights that Josh has, that light over <laughs> that light overshines that little flashlight. But they're both on, and then when you have such bright light, you can see little pieces of lint flying in the air. And then they, I used to work uh, as a painter. I used to work at uh, here in. Uh, in Southern California, there's called Guided, and uh, it was, uh, now it's, I forgot what the term is, but they make heart valves and things for the heart for people. So they had to have pure, it was pure white, and then you had to wear a white smock and shoes and a beanie over your head, and, and we were painters going in there, but it, it, because it couldn't have any contamination, no dust, no, nothing coming off your skin, so you were totally gloves and everything. And we would have to paint this special paint that I don't know how much it was or what it even had in, in the sense of uh, you're, exposing to, you're, you're exposed to it. But, you know, we had respirators with oxygen. So anytime I worked, they gave us prevailing wages. But I always wondered, what are the effects? And the father would remind me, don't worry, son, it won't affect you because I'm covering you. You're my vessel of honor. So with honor, there's protection. With honor, there's uh -huh, riches. With honor, there's prosperity. With honor, there's <laughs> simple lowliness of heart, esteeming others better than yourself. Exactly. Okay, let's read on. He says, verse 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the Deuteronomist may be of Yah and not of us. We are troubled. Listen closely. This would happen to a vessel of honor. It has to go through this. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Why? Because you're a vessel of honor. You've learned how to honor your heavenly father. Then you manifest it by honoring the apostle, the sheliac, the elders, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the fivefold ministry that helps you come out of the Egypt realm of mentality. I'm telling you, Egypt had three days in the old covenant. Three days journey to get out of Egypt and it took them over 40 years. They came out in three days out of Egypt, the city, out of Egypt, the land. But it took them over 40 years twice with Moses. So that's 80 total to get Egypt out of their heart. <laughs> yeah, that's why the light has to shine out of your heart because he's in you. His, your dwelling, you are the temple of the Ruach Kadosh, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Honor comes by you allowing Him in your heart to speak through you. So what do you do? You start disciplining yourself. Now there's times you're going to joke around with your family, your husband, your wife, your kids, your disciples. If you're a pastor, you go out, you joke, uh, you know, and it's you're not abruptly and just transgressing and committing uh, the greatest sin, the sin of blasphemy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So watch the next verse. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. 
Persecuted, but not forsaken. Uh, cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Yeshua, the dying of Yeshua HaMashiach, that the life also of Yeshua might be made manifest in our body that the light that you have an understanding of the fear and the honor of your father malachi i'm going to run a minute over malachi i got to read this in to tie this in in malachi chapter one listen to this verse six Oh no, verse 5. Your eyes shall see and you shall say, Yahuwah will be magnified from the border of Israel. How many know you're Israel? But how many know you have to honor the, with your eyes what you see? You have to be so in your patience. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, in your patience, you possess your soul. So then now that you're possessing your soul, you're learning how to divide Mechlaka and Mechlaket, and you know how to divide the word by the two-edged sword. In Malachi chapter 5, I mean chapter 1, verse 5, and your eyes shall see, and you shall say, Yahuwah will be magnified from the border of Israel. Well, he's saying you're going to be magnified with honor because you're learning how to honor your father. Verse 6, a son honoreth his father and a servant honoreth his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? Where is my honor? Some of you don't know how to honor. You can't stay seated in one church. You got to go from one place to another. And they're not teaching you kingdom. They're, they're acting like they are, but they're not. They're filling their wallets, filling their accounts. And this is why I'm bringing this to you. Can you once again stop, repent, and ask the Father to give you the due order of what honor is? When you start honoring your father, and I'm talking about honoring spiritual fathers, apostles, yep, prophets, apostles, Shiliak, prophet is Navim, and then More, More, M O R E H, I think, or M O R H E or E H, E H. Uh, Josh has it on the board. I told you I was going over time, and he's pointing to me, and I, and I can't help myself. I got to take this because it's on my heart. And the Father's in control. So uh, if you run over time, I'll pay you for watching at that extra moment. Okay? But here's something interesting. Look what he says. Where's my honor? Where's my honor? There's fathers and sons that don't get together. Why? Because the Father rules with the soulish realm. The Son rules with the soulish realm. But when a father and son are together, they're so happy, they laugh, that it makes other people jealous. It makes men Grown men jealous, grown fathers jealous of their son because the spiritual father is taking oversight of his soul. That's something that you and I, I had to repent because I didn't teach my children. That's why today there's no honor towards me as a father or my wife as a mother. Because the things that I did, I dishonored my mom, I dishonored my father when I was young. I took off out of the house and then come back home and sneak in and I would do it at any given time whenever I wanted. I would sleep all day, go to school if I wanted to, no honor. Do you see, do you follow the, the thinking, the path of righteousness is straight and narrow. Honor comes by you understanding how powerful it is to follow the steps of your master. Are you willing to walk like he walked? He honored his father to the point that he said, Father, send me. I will go to, <laughs> to an unclean, unrighteous generation. Today, here we are. I would be a master. Uh, where is my fear, saith Yahuwah of hosts unto you? Oh, priest. Uh-oh, now he's talking about the priest, you and I. Oh, priest that despise my name. You know some of you don't want to use his name. Why? Because you've been taught the lie. And to give Father his rightful honor, you got to restore his name. His name is Yahuwah. You read about, don't get mad at me. Study, son. Study, daughter. Study, priest. 
Study king, study prophet, and see what the Father reveals to you. You will see it in the Strong's Concordance if you do a study and start from the old all the way to the new. Old covenant, new covenant, revised covenant. O priest that despise my name, and you say, wherein have we despised thy name? Until we see each other again, I'm going to let you think on that. Oh, <laughs> wherein did we despise your name? When you talk about your elders, when you talk about your wife. I repented to my wife in, in uh, our Sunday gathering today. We gathered to assemble Mashiach. And I leaned on, I said, forgive me, because I need to once again get back to the honor. I got to once again get back to honor you that are viewing and listening. But you have to also honor me that are viewing and listening. Not me as a person, but the one that abides in me. Remember, he said, I will provide, I will be your provider. I will be your source, your resource, and your supply. Until we see each other again, shalom.